Hi, everybody. Matt Bernie or Mike Veer taking a look at the Empire Distaff from Belmont Park on Saturday. It's race number nine, a day filled with New York bread stakes races at Belmont Park. If you're playing this race or any of the other races, head on over to DRF Bets. All sorts of great deals for new sign-up members. Head on over to bets.drf.com for all the details. We're going to take a look at this field. We'll take them right in post-position order. Again, New York bread, Phillies, and Mares going a mile and a 16th on the main track. Mike, the number one is Frost Wise going out from Michael Dilger. This is a, a Philly. The blinkers come off. We haven't seen her since basically the end of May when something clearly went wrong. Um, I, I thought the fact that she ran as well as she did or as close as she did to a horse like Blue Prize in that top flight two starts back at a mile and an eighth, I suppose a race like that makes her a legitimate player in here. But to be honest with you, I, I still think that she's probably better a little bit shorter as far as distances are concerned. Boy, do we agree on that one, man. I mean, I, I can't take anything away from the race that she ran that day. I still prefer her going a little bit shorter. Um, I will say that in that uh, top flight, I mean, she just got absolutely loose on the lead in that race. Um, and that is not going to happen here. There's way too much other speed in this race for her to get that kind of a trip in here. So I guess I would wonder if that matters. I think it does a little bit. Um, there's no denying, though, that on her best day, she can run a race that's fast enough to give this field a real hard time. A horse that seems to be on the upward sort of trajectory is the number two Take Charge Aubrey for Bruce Levine. Javier has the mount this time around. Most recently, a winner on a muddy surface at Belmont on September the 26th. That was in a non-winners of two other than um, really her last three races. They've all been very, very strong. She was a game second in that Fleet Indian two back up at Saratoga. And then she won at seven eighths of a mile. Three starts back from a speed figure standpoint. She fits in here quite well. Distance wise, I know she's two for three. Do you think this is actually what she wants? Yeah, it's it remains to be seen, I guess. I mean, I, I sort of get to position um, that many people are taking that she's probably better going shorter, like around seven furlongs, maybe. Um, I don't know if I feel that way or not. I mean, I, I'm willing to just, you know, take it as it comes with her right now because she's run really well, basically in all of her races. And she hasn't made really any mistakes since they stretched her out in distance. She's run fine going at least this far. She didn't beat a great field last time and she got a perfect trip. But she blew that field away. Um, I thought she ran really well in the Fleet Indian going a mile and an eighth, two starts back. So I just have no knocks to this horse. And she's one of those horses, Matt, who can get a really good trip in this race because she's very tactical, very handy. If this pace uh, develops in front of her, she'll be sitting right behind it. The number three is Pink Twist going out for John Terranova. A stakes place mare at this point, or stakes place Philly anyway. I know it was only a field of five, but she ran third in that Saratoga do most recently. I guess if I'm just calling a spade a spade, when I look at her on paper, I think she's not gotten any better since early on in her racing career. And that was earlier this year. And unfortunately for her, even her best races, I don't think make her a contender. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, going a little bit shorter after two nine furlong races at Saratoga helps her, but I don't see the race that makes her that competitive in here. I had a very hard time getting a read on the number four Hayfield going out for Jeremiah Englehart. Now, she is five for six since being claimed by Englehart. She's clearly in great form, no question about it. Saratoga, Belmont, doesn't matter. Sloppy, fast, doesn't matter. She'll show up and run. My question for you, is this distance going to be ideal for her? I feel like it's not, um, but I don't think I want to put anything past her right now in the form that she's in. She just keeps showing up and surprising every time, um, just keeps running really good races, in particular the one at Saratoga, too, back. I mean, that was a pretty good field. She was awful good that day. I don't know if she wants to go this far. I don't know if she can come with that same closing kick stretching out into a fast pace that she's been showing sprinting, uh, but she's in really good form right now. I don't really want her in this race, Matt, but I'm not going to be surprised if she runs well again. The number five Rosie Jersey is a horse that's been making her noise really on some of the, let's say the smaller circuits, the smaller tracks. Now she goes out to Belmont Park. If you believe that stakes race most recently at Finger Lakes on October the 13th from a buyer's standpoint, she does have a puncher's chance in here. My only concern is that, that's far and away the outlier of her entire career. She's rock solid. She shows up and runs, but from a speed figure standpoint, that, that buyer was nearly 20 points at her top. <laughs> I don't know if I totally trust it. Do you? Yeah, I don't really trust it either. We'll see if she can back it up. I think it's worth pointing out that the horse that beat her that day, Frosty Margarita, who's a, a fine horse um, that Rudy Rodriguez trained. She's been around for a long time. She's run over 30 times. It's also the fastest race that she's ever run uh, by, by quite a bit. I, I don't know how much I believe that figure. Frosty Margarita came uh, to Saratoga for her next start and just got trounced by a few of these horses. I, I don't know, Matt. This horse, she's in good form. She's got a little bit of speed, but I think this is a tough spot. I don't trust that last race. Speaking of Rudy Rodriguez, the number six Frosty Ann is one that goes out for Rudy. This is a horse. All she is doing is she's on a six-race winning streak. 
most recently a winner of the Saratoga Dew up there pressing fast fractions and was just able to hang on by a half length over Landmine. And you see Pink Twist, it was a country mile back to her in third. Uh, let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector because Frosty Ann figures to be forwardly placed. They don't actually have her outright on the lead. They have her second in behind the 10 horse with the one horse coming up in third. Uh, I have to be honest, I don't know that she's a superstar, but I just like the fact that Frosty Ann, for the most part, She's going to show up with an effort. Whether it's good enough to win or not remains to be seen, but 13 for 31 lifetime, she's a racehorse. Yeah, she she loves to win races, and you can't knock that about her. And she's obviously in very good form, and she's you know another horse in this race. You don't have to worry about distance with her either. I mean, she'll she'll go at least this far. Um, it's just a question of whether she could run, keep running those races in, in spots where, I mean, she has no, almost no chance of making the lead in here. Uh, I wonder if that works against her. You know, you look at her recent win streak here, and she's going off, you know, very, very short prices in those races. Um, they found some good spots for Rudy Zanner main track only a couple times. So he's just done a really good job with it. This is the toughest spot, but she deserves the chance. She's in great form. And you can see that red bar indicating a fast pace. Perhaps that works against a horse like Frosty Ann or anyone else that figures to be relatively close to the front end. The number seven is an interesting horse, in my opinion. That's English Soul. Goes out for Ray Handel, and you got Manny Franco who retains the mount. From a speed figure standpoint, specifically and strictly speaking, she's not fast enough right now to win a race like this as a three-year-old filly. But I have to be honest, I don't think she's run a poor race really in any one of her eight lifetime starts. And it feels like once they clearly realize that dirt and the main track is what she wants, I just think she shows up and runs each and every time. I guess really the ultimate question comes down to, do you trust what your eye could tell you if you believe, like I believe, that she's actually a nice horse, or do you trust the figures that suggest that she's not fast enough? Yeah, I mean, you got to. I guess you got to do a little bit of both. I mean, at at a certain point, um, the figures will catch up to her. Um, if she's just, if that's all she is, then it's, it's going to show at some point. Um, and she's going to land in a spot where they go a really fast pace, or they they run a really fast race, and she won't be able to cope with it. Um, and maybe it'll be here. She steps up to face older horses for the first time. Um, so maybe she'll finally be find found out. I'm kind of with you though. I think she's talented. I think she's better than the figures make her look. She she runs nothing but good races. Doesn't need the lead to be effective. I think there are a lot of things to like about her, and she might be a really good price for the first time in her life in this race because she doesn't look that fast on paper. What do you think of Tisnow's smile for Charlie Baker? This is a horse that only a handful of times in her career have they tried going longer distances. They've usually kept her those shorter sprint distances. Most recently, she won at 33-1, to 1, and not only did she win, she drew clear and won by almost four lengths. She earned an 86 fire. That was a career best day, a uh, career best figure that day, a 109 raw time form U.S. rating. From a figure standpoint, that race fits in here very, very well. I just I have a little bit of question about how far she wants to go. Yeah, I do too. I don't know if she wants to go this far. Um, she's pulled off back-to-back -back big upsets um, in her last two races. Um, and I don't want to knock her too much. I will just say in the last race, um, it kind of fell apart a little bit. It was a gold rail day at Belmont, and she never left the inside and came running right up the rail. Um, I think she maybe took advantage of that track a little bit and a, a pace collapse in that, in that situation. I think this is way too tough a spot for her, but I'm not going to knock her in her current form. Split time goes out for Linda Rice. You always have to respect Linda in any kind of race in New York, but particularly these New York Bread Stakes races. Arad Ortiz with the mount. I look at her on paper and I say, you're probably not fast enough to get the job done. But again, she's never been out of the money in eight lifetime starts, five of those being victories. Yeah, she looks a lot like English Soul, as a matter of fact. Yep. And they finished it in a, in a very close photo in their last race up in Saratoga. Um, you know, we'll just say I like um, her getting back around one turn here. She's done fine in her last two races around two turns, but I like her getting to go a little bit shorter in this race. Race. She's got the right running style. She'll be off of it. She'll be running at the end. Actually, I feel the same way about her as I feel about English Soul. I think she's talented. I think she's better than she looks on paper. She's a horse I want to use in this race. The 10 is the pace setter, according to Time Form US, and the pace projector. That's Bluegrass Flag goes out for Tom Morley. We know, again, kind of what this horse's MO is. We're going to try to go, break, get to the front, and last as long as we can. My concerns, the times that they have stretched her out, she hasn't been able to see out the distance. Yeah, the distance feels like it's a real problem for her, especially if, with other speed in the race to sort of push her along. That won't uh, help her too much. Um, she's sort of a tale of two horses in her PP. She got off to a great start to her career. First five or six races were really good. She hasn't looked like that horse um, in her recent starts. I just wonder if she's even good enough, all the distance and everything else aside. The, the 11 is landmine for Phil Serpy. This is a horse that was fourth most recently in an N1X, but two starts back, only a half length behind Frosty and in that Saratoga do up at Saratoga, going a mile and an eighth. The distance isn't going to be a problem for her. I have to be honest, though, when I look at her, the past five races, she's sort of living in that high 70, low 80 range. 
It makes her a fringe contender. I think she's solid. I don't think she's spectacular. I think she's an underneath type of horse. Yeah, I kind of agree with you. I mean, I, I get that if, if you just sort of take her figures in isolation, she's got some faster races than some of the other horses we've already talked about. I'm not so sure I think she's as good as some of those other horses. But there's nothing wrong with her. She, gets, she wants distance. All those things are fine. I'm just not sure how good she is. The 12, to me, might be the most fascinating horse in the race. That's Bonita Bianca going out for Jason Service. And I say that because most recently, they tried her on the turf for the first time in the Hettinger, and that made me kind of scratch my head a little bit. Now we look at this formulator fact, which isn't particularly good for Jason Service. Past five years, turf to dirt route races in Naira, one for 16, six in the money with an 81 cent ROI. Um, I, I think she's a really nice sprinter. I think that the distance isn't a problem for her either. We've seen that in the past that she's stretched out successfully I just what was the logic behind the turf move because uh, you and I talked about it a little bit before we came on there's not a heck of a lot of turf in the pedigree yeah I I don't I I couldn't make sense of it when they when uh, she was entered that race and uh, Illman and I did the stakes preview and I still have no idea why they decided to run in there she didn't do any running at all in there not that I'm surprised by it um, I just thought it was a weird move and now they come right back to dirt with her I, I don't know why they did that but I'm gonna try not to dwell on it too much um, her first three races for service, I thought she ran really well in all of them. And I know they were sprinting. Um, and maybe there is a chance that she just improved as a sprinter. I guess that's possible, but I don't know, man. She was good going along last year. She was the favorite in this race last year as a three-year-old. And, and that was based on some really good races coming in. I, I think she handles distance just fine. I'm going to move past the turf try last time. I don't know why they did that and think this is the right surface. The distance is fine for her. She's in really good form outside of the turf try. I think this is a great spot for her. You just laid out all the positives for and let's take a look at our picks here for the Empire Distaff. You're going to go with the outside runner, Bonita Bianca. I agree with you. The three dirt races that Service has had her with, I think they've all been strong, even including that run at Delaware, because I, I just don't think she appreciated being in behind those horses. Yep. She got out into the clear. She kicked down the lane very impressively. And again, she's proven herself at the distance in the past. There's no reason to think that that's not going to work for her here. I just... I just that turf is just sticking <laughs> in the back of my mind. I, I can't blame him that. I, I'm very confounded by it myself. Uh, I'm going to just take a shot with Frosty Ann in here. I, to be honest, it's one of those things. I think she's just a cool blue collar type. She's no superstar, but the tactical speed that she brings to the table and the fact that she's on a six race winning streak, she's four for six at Belmont. She may not be any sort of giant price in here, but I'm hopeful maybe you get somewhere in that seven to two range, just because this does feel like a little bit of a wide open affair. So I'll go with the number six, Frosty, and Mike is going to go with the outside run of the number 12, Bonita Bianca, in the ninth at Belmont on Saturday afternoon. That is the Empire Distaff. If you're playing the Empire Distaff or any of the other races from Belmont or any of the other races from around the country on Saturday, check out DRF Bets. All sorts of great deals for new sign-up members. Head on over to bets.drf.com for all the details. Schedule post time for race number nine, the Empire Distaff at Belmont Park on Saturday afternoon, 448 Eastern. Best of luck.